Welcome to Conversations in Integrative Medicine. And we're going to talk a little bit today about how the disciplines are practiced and how they're defined uh, when we talk about an integrative medicine model. These conversations are sponsored by Natural Clinician and the Holt Institute of Medicine. We talked about some of the differences in earlier modules between the practice of integrative and conventional medicine, but we're seeing one thing startling everyone, and that is that many, many practitioners of conventional medicine are now educating themselves in natural medicine in order to practice integrated forms of medicine because of massive consumer demand. In fact, patients are voting with their feet in some circumstances where they perceive a medical conveyor belt, especially in managed care environments where large numbers of patients are often seen in offices and really the issues are very allopathic in terms of clear uh, drug prescription as the first line option. And in fact, integrated medicine doesn't accept drug prescriptions as a first-line option, uh, nor surgical interventions, without the application of much more holistic health care. So, taking a history for an integrative medicine practitioner is a little different often than the conventional physician. There's more of a focus on lifestyle issues, more of a focus on socio-behavioral factors, uh, more of an interest in the whole area of body-mind disorders because a large amount of uh, reason or number of reasons for consultation involve functional disease. Let's give us ourselves some examples. There may be as many as 25 million Americans with irritable bowel syndrome. Uh, as many, if not more, with functional dyspepsia. These we know to be examples of mind-body disorder and in fact peer-reviewed medical literature in these cases show that things like hypnotherapy, behavioral therapy and other natural interventions may be more beneficial than standard allopathic interventions in terms of clinical outcome involving cost containment, less patient visits, better outcome. Uh, more prolonged remission of, uh, of the disorder. So it's really about matching horses for courses when we look at integrated medicine and look at the expanse or the pluralism that we have evolving in modern medicine where the healthcare consumer is seeking massage therapy, they're seeking rolfing, they're interested in things like posture therapy or the Alexander Technique they're interested in new diagnostic instruments that may provide guidance to some people on how to use nutritional uh, interventions for wellness promotion. And then of course we have this modern frenetic interest in anti-aging or longevity medicine, call it what one will. Um, again, high-bound conventional practitioners have raised their eyebrows at anti-aging medical practice but we see that anti-aging has an increasing evidence base and marries uh, a lot of different disciplines together, including aesthetics, uh, together with plastic surgery, together with nutritional support, with advanced skin care, you name it. There is really now uh, an emergence of the medical spa phenomenon. Um, and Arguably, cosmetics are not part of medicine, but these days they clearly are. Um, the idea of improving one's physical appearance and improving one's sense of well-being is certainly all transmitted into wellness promotion. It can promote happiness and forms a way of dealing with modern stress. People are stressed about their physical appearance. They want to retain their vitality. And we have an expanding elderly population, and uh, that's clear. We need to change our approaches as to how we can promote health and well-being in later years of life. 
the idea of getting old doesn't appeal to anyone. The idea of getting on with one's life is what it's all about. So apart from this generic information, we're talking about how clinical disciplines interact. And presumably in most practices, the pivotal individual is the physician, or in other practices, um, it could be the chiropractor. And in fact, we see whole, holistic wellness centers uh, really developing alongside uh, licensed practitioners of different disciplines or naturopaths who are faced with the very discriminating circumstance where some states don't even recognize the speciality of naturopathic medicine. Um, I can only describe this as retarded. Now, obviously, we have within uh, medical practice uh, disagreements. Uh, you know, what is the best approach for simple backache? But the idea that the MD or the DO uh, owns exclusively medical intervention is passé. It's an obsolete notion. Uh, we see in peer-reviewed medical literature that simple backache, chronic backache, may be more effectively managed by chiropractic medicine or spinal manipulation than it is by many allopathic standard interventions where we see the massive prescription of drugs such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, which are really overused and used inappropriately. Uh, these particular drugs represent a major public health concern. In fact, as early as the 70s and subsequently in the 80s, I was writing extensively about the disease uh, profile caused by these drugs. And they are uh, the commonest cause of peptic ulceration uh, in clinical practice that we can observe these days. Um, they cause dyspepsia invariably, they cause liver problems, they cause problems with renal function, and of course we see in modern times this terrible association that some of the COX-2 inhibitor drugs have had with increased risk of cardiovascular events, notably stroke and heart attack. A heavy price to pay for the treatment of uh, simple arthritis that may be amenable to more simple natural intervention than the prescription of a potent non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So here we are, um, we focused on one area only but that is the disenchantment we see these days with the pharmaceutical promise. The pharmaceutical revolution which has gone on for pushing 60 years now has not delivered the promise. And we see epidemics of drug side effects uh, that really are very challenging to healthcare consumers and the physician. So again we're talking about the general discipline and application but really integrative medicine is about complete care. It's about focusing on all aspects and attempting to put the individual into a healing environment. So it's a very time-consuming process for many patients, but a very rewarding process. And I appreciate, again, you listening to this module, which still is general talk about integrative medicine and its application, but we will move through some very specific information in subsequent modules. Thank you for listening.